okay, folks, we are recording now. Uh, so I'm just going to do a quick little intro again, and we'll dive in. So welcome, everybody, to the Gale Database Refresher for Find It Virginia. We're going to go give a quick overview of uh, your resources, and we want to take a look at the new interface that's available for several of your uh, resources as well. As we go through, feel free to jump in with questions anytime. You can certainly send questions in via the chat as well. I'm happy to answer them that way. Although I won't see them right away, so you'll actually see me pop back and forth between the windows um, to check the chat box. So kind of see a little behind the scenes action there as we go through. Uh, I'm going to start sharing my browser window. So that will give you a look at, of course, what I'm doing on my end. And we're going to start here at the Gale menu. I'm going to change my screen resolution so things are a bit bigger on your end. You can also play with the options that appear at the very top of your conference window, like fit to screen and fit to window, uh, to see if that makes a better display for you as well. But this should help, too. It'll make things on your end a little bigger. Uh, because of the change in my screen resolution, you'll see that I might have to do a little more moving around on the screen than you normally do. Uh, but just kind of ignore that as uh, kind of a, a kink of the, uh, of the conference. Um, now, we started out here on the Gale menu, which you may bypass. You may not see this very often. It may be completely unfamiliar to you. But basically, this is the list of resources you get from Gale through Find It Virginia. And you've got a really well-rounded collection, a lot of great resources here. Uh, the menu is divided into two areas. Up top here, we have these databases with the check marks. And then down below that, we've got these databases without them. Okay? The difference between these two portions of the menu are that the databases up above, you can cross-search in, meaning we can search military and intelligence database with InfoTrack Religion and Philosophy and, and any of the other databases up there. The ones down below, though, are still standalone. So something like Biography Resource Center, Health and Wellness Resource Center, you do have to search on their own. Uh, they use their own unique interfaces to suit their content and uh, will eventually move to a cross-searchable platform, but aren't quite there yet. So these databases down below are still standalone, as we call them. Um, <clears throat> move back up to the top of the menu. These databases that are cross-searchable will allow you to, you know, for lack of a better term, kill uh, several birds with one stone. Uh, we're able to log in and search them all together. We dedupe the results, meaning that if Time Magazine appears in, you know, two or three of these sources and we cross-search, we'll still only get one hit for Time. So it'll uh, isolate the results and uh, uh, not give you uh, duplicate hits. Um, this menu is customizable. If you do use your Gale menu quite a bit, we can actually change the order of items on your menu. If you'd rather move general one, one file up to the top, or maybe you're in a high school setting, maybe you want student edition first, we can do that. We can put it in alphabetical order, whatever suits you. Um, a quick call to our tech support, and they can take care of that for you. Uh, when we wrap up, I'm going to give you our contact info. I'll also be emailing you all a handout uh, with all of that information in it as well. Um, any questions so far? Okay, just checking the chat there too, none there. All right, well, let's give a quick overview of the resources you'll probably use most often here um, with your Find at Virginia resources. Uh, Expanded Academic is a periodical database built for scholarly and academic journals. You'll find many peer-reviewed titles there. Uh, we find, of course, it gets a lot of use in an academic setting, but we also find when high school students have access to it, they use it. Uh, so we find a lot of high school, especially 11th and 12th graders, taking advantage of Expanded Academic. It is a periodical database, so mainly magazines, journals, and so on, some news content as well, uh, and some ready reference content. Updated daily with a back file of 1980. Uh, General Reference Center Gold is actually a subset of what's in General OneFile. General, General OneFile is our big periodical database for uh, general interest uh, periodicals you'll find a wide range of subject areas covered there, as well as a large number of periodicals. There are over 12,000 titles there, with almost 8,000 of them being full text. 
system. So it's a big database. Uh, like our others, updated daily, back filed in 1980. Uh, also has some ready reference content in it. You'll find um, Fedora's travel guides for cities, uh, World Almanac, um, lots of multimedia as well. So it's audio, video, and uh, image content too. Okay, so great resource for public libraries. Uh, but again, we find high school students and even middle schools take advantage of General One File as well. Student Edition is our periodical database built for high school students. Professional Collection is a periodical database built for educators, uh, school administrators, teachers, librarians, uh, and so on. You the Virtual Reference library. library is a collection of ebooks, uh, reference content that would normally never leave the library. Uh, you've got 24 hour access to here. There are about 15 titles that Find at Virginia provides for you. Computer Excuse database. Me just one uh, oh, sorry, question? Yes. My system will not allow me to see what you're doing. And I tried to install a software, which I thought I had done before the conference began. And now it says you may want to alert the meeting host that you, you can't see the screen sharing. Okay, I would press star zero, and one of our one of the operators from Conference Plus will come on the line and see if they can get you straightened out. It it may be um, uh, if pop up blockers are turned on or Java's not enabled, um, but they they may be able to they'll be able to give you more expertise into why it's not. Star, if it allowed you to do the download, I I'm not sure why. Um, you wouldn't be able to see the sharing portion, so hopefully they can point you in the right direction. They'll, when you press star zero, it'll bring the operator on and they'll speak with you privately. Thank you. Sure, sorry about that. We're doing another one of these on December 10th. Uh, okay. If anybody isn't able to view the conference today, maybe want to try logging into that one, or just feel free to contact me in the future and we can, we can set something up at your convenience. And how would we contact you? I'm going to email you all my contact info. You can get me at the 800 number, and okay. um, uh, I'll give you my email address as well. All right. Thank you. Sure. Sorry about that. Um, computer database is our periodical database for technology journals, legal track, legal journals, of course. Uh, the rest of the list here, military and intelligence, if a track religion and philosophy and so on, these are all periodical databases with just a, a particular focus um, for subject area. So I'm a little more specialized content. We're looking at the menu here for uh, the State Library in Virginia. So they actually have access to a few resources um, just themselves that aren't available statewide, the Biography and Genealogy Master Index being one of them. Uh, business and Company Resource Center is a, a large business collection. You've got company profiles, investment reports, financial data, uh, course periodicals, really well-rounded uh, collection. Big database as well, lots of content. Um, great use in the public library for those folks who come in and get value line every day. Okay. Business and Company Resource Center is a great um, complement to that. Uh, Contemporary Literary Criticism Select is, of course, based on the print series of the same name, so literary criticism there. Health and Wellness Resource Center with the Alternative Health Module is, of course, our health database. Uh, you can limit your search to consumer health and find uh, medical journals, for, well, uh, health and uh, medical journals for a general audience. Uh, there's lots of reference content there, uh, medical encyclopedias, drug encyclopedias, um, and so on. There's also lots of multimedia, over 700 health-related videos from Healthology, which are, um, you know, you're thinking about LASIK surgery, there's a short five-minute video you can watch informing you about the uh, uh, procedure. There are also videos uh, that we link to that you can actually tune in and see a surgery in action. Um, so lots of great uh, multimedia in the health database as well. Junior Edition is a periodical database for middle school students. It uses our K-12 interface, which is a little more colorful, a little more icon driven. You want to ignore Kids Edition. That is, um, has been replaced with Kids InfoBits. Kids InfoBits is built for kindergarten through fifth grade. Very visual database, lots of um, colors, big icons, big text, and of course the reading level is appropriate for K through five. You've got a mix of reference, periodical, uh, and uh, multimedia in Kids InfoBit. 
What do I read next is our Reader's Advisory Database based on our print series. And lastly, Biography Resource Center is our uh, actually most used database at Gale. It gets the highest usage. Uh, there are over uh, 350 full text uh, Gale print sources making it up for biographies for over 350,000 people. Uh, there's also periodicals to help balance out that reference content, keep you up to date with, with what folks are up to. Uh, but you'll find entertainers, sports stars, authors, world leaders, historical figures. Really, the focus there is getting people in the database. There's no particular subject focus. So uh, lots of content there. Okay. Any questions about the database? And I'm just going to check the chat box quickly. All right. Well, let's go ahead and cross search some of these databases up top because uh, this will show us the new interface, as we call it, Power Search 2.0, uh, launched this summer for uh, all of Virginia. You'll see it when you go individually into a product. For example, if I click just on General One File here. We go into General One, one File, and it's using the uh, updated interface here. Okay. We'll also see it, though, when we cross search. If I click on this Change Databases link from the top of our banner, it'll bring me into the menu again. Okay. And I can select the databases I want to cross search in. I can check them off one by one and scoop them up, or select all, and it'll just check them all off for me there. Now, I would say when you're cross-searching, regardless of the patron you're working with or the age of the student, whoever you may be working with, I would always include Gale Virtual Reference Library. That's got lots of great reference content. Um, there's a wide range of audience within it. Um, so I'd always scoop that up. Um, but of course, the periodical databases are going to be up to you depending on, uh, well, really all of it's up to you, uh, but depending on what you're after and, and who you may be working with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and scoop up everything I can, and if I click continue here on the menu, it'll bring me in, and I'll be cross-searching uh, all of the databases available. I'll let it catch up with me here. Well, as it's coming up, let me talk a bit about the new interface. It's a more web-friendly look, a little more colorful. Uh, it has a bit more flash to it, um, but there are some very handy bells and whistles we're going to be taking a look at. But we haven't lost anything from the previous interface. All the things you could do in Power Search 1.0, you can still do in Power Search 2.0. We've just changed the way it looks, where you find some things, and uh, added new features. One of the things that I think is really useful about it is the dashboard here on the front page. This lets you know kind of what you're using. I'm currently searching 12 databases, and that's a hyperlink, actually. If I click on it, it'll take me back out to the menu. I've got 92 million articles here. It was updated as recently as today. Yes. We've got our date range here, and then a brief paragraph about Power Search. Now, if we were in an individual product, then I would see, you know, about General One file there. So whatever you're searching is what it's giving you the information. Uh, for. So it, it helps folks kind of get an idea about what they're using. The other thing we've done is started to highlight content. If I look in the lower left hand corner here, my featured publication is Macworld. Okay. Featured publication is something that Gale sets up right now, and we change it here and there, but that's actually customizable by the library. If you'd rather, we can feature a different publication for your library or your school. And then you could make it specific to maybe something uh, in the area if we have a local paper or a local publication you'd like to highlight there. Or even maybe you just want to make it Time Magazine, the New York Times, Newsweek, People, whatever you may be interested in putting there. To change that, it's just a quick call to our technical support. Or if any of you have access to InfoTrack Config, uh, that's a tool that allows you to run usage statistics, but also make uh, customizations like this one. Uh, you can make those changes there mm -hmm. yourself. I'm certainly happy to do it for you as well. You know, Again, I'm going to be giving you all my contact info when we wrap up. Feel free to shoot me an email and I can make the change for you as well. Uh, any questions at all about that? Only a handful of them. Okay. 
then over on the right hand side, just kind of making a U shape here, beneath the area where, where you can enter in a search, you'll notice there's this uh, selection of topics, global warming, the economy, Michael Jackson. We have what we call, or what everybody calls actually, RSS feeds here. Basically, every time I come back to this home page, whether it's from logging in to use the database or you know coming back to do a new search, what we're doing here is an RSS feed, meaning it's doing a search on global warming, the economy, and so on, and bringing back the newest articles for that topic. Now, like featured publications, these are Gale choices right now, and we will change them here and there. But again, like featured publication, these can actually be customized by the library. So if you'd like to have a different topic here, say healthcare reform or you know, Thanksgiving dessert, something like that, you can just, again, call our tech support, and they'll make the change for you here, or use InfoTrack config to uh, uh, make the customization as well. Okay. I've got a handout that details how to do this uh, for both featured publication and the RSS feeds. Uh, that'll be one of the handouts I'm sending you. Uh, so it's very handy. It's a way to engage your users. Uh, if there's a particular topic maybe locally in the community or if you're in a school setting, you know students are getting ready to do a report on rainforest, you can make these tabs something that'll grab their attention. Uh, and bring them right into content. Okay. You could also, if you'd rather not have a topic here, we can also make uh, publications list here. The most recent issue of Time Magazine, the most recent uh, issue of Newsweek, you can have flow to these tabs as well. So one of the ways you can customize the new interface here. Now before we actually start searching, I want to show you a tool I'm going to use in the, in the training. In the upper right hand corner, there's a login button here. Okay, the login is for the end user. You know, as I'm using the database, what I can do is create a user account. And well, I'll go ahead and do one so you can see, but let me just point out what it's going to do for you. Over here on the left hand side in these dark blue boxes, you've got uh, your search, or I'm sorry, search alerts, search lists, marked items, you can save these things from session to session okay? if you create a user account. Now you don't have to, but if you want to take advantage of these tools, you do have to create the user account. The most popular thing here is actually marked items. You've always been able to create a mark list in your Gale database, and it allows you to print all the items in that mark list at once, email them, or really any of the other tools. But once you left the database, that mark list got cleared out. Well, now with the new user account, you can create a mark list and save it for the next time you log in. So you can start gathering research, save it to a mark list folder, pick up where you left off a couple days later, or even you know a month later. Where, whenever you log back in, you're going to be able to get access to that uh, marked items folder that you created. Okay. There are a couple. There are other tools, of course, you can use with the user account. Uh, we'll see them as we go through. I'm just going to jump in here and quickly set up an. account account so you can see what's required. And again, this isn't necessary, but it's a very handy option. So I'm going to create my uh, user account here. And I always have to create a new uh, uh, email address. Um, I'm going to have a fake one here uh, just so I can demonstrate our tools. So. Uh, bear with me just a second while I create this, but this is really all we need, your name, email, password, and then a security question. And that's it. We don't require more than that out of your user account. There is <coughs> the inevitable licensing agreement, which you've got to agree to, and then a note here if you'd like to stay informed about uh, Gail Cengage Learning Products and Promotions, which I'm actually going to uncheck since, since this isn't a real email address. Click Continue. And that's it. My account is created. That's all we need. All right, so I get my little confirmation here that I've created my account, a little welcome. You'll notice in the upper right-hand corner now, instead of login, I've got welcome Stacy. And because I'm logged into my account, there are going to be some things I'll be able to do, uh, some features I'll see here that you normally wouldn't if you didn't have a user account. So I'll point those out as we go along. 
Any questions about that? Okay, got a question here in the chat about customizing and within a school system, how could that work? It's really going to depend on how your school district is set up. If the entire district, maybe you've got, you know, two high schools, four middle schools, and ten elementary schools. If you all use the same links to access the databases, then the changes you made would be for all the schools in the district. But I believe that what it looks like for me for most of the Virginia schools, the way that they're set up, that's not the case. It looks like you all have individual accounts, and that can help you track usage at your specific school, but also make these customizations. So say at one elementary school, you've got different tabs and different feature publications, and then you know a few streets over at the other elementary school, they've got something different. So it can be set up uh, that way. If you're set up, though, and we're treating you as one school right now for an entire district, we can actually separate you out and make separate accounts for you, too. So we have to take a look at your account specifically to see, uh, but we can certainly um, work with you if it's not the way you want it. Anybody else? Why are they nominated? Oh. Yeah. Ben, I'm going to go ahead and do, just start searching here so we can take a look at kind of how your results have changed and uh, what new options are there. The front page search here is our basic search, so I can uh, search on Anything I like, say I'm interested in articles about glaciers or maybe want articles about glaciers and uh, global warming. You know, it's a pretty simple search. You can throw anything you want at it. Uh, I'm going to stick, though, with glaciers. I want to grab something that's pretty broad to show you how you can narrow your results once you get them. <coughs> so search for glaciers here. And you've got your three choices that you always have in Gale databases, subject, keyword, or entire document. Entire document is just that, every word out of every article. Subject searches the subject headings only. And keyword searches the subject heading, citation, and first 50 words or so of your article. So it's a nice happy medium. I tend to go with it most often. And our results come back on folder tabs, just as they have in uh, most of our databases now. Magazines, academic journals, books, news, and so on. We've got all our, you know, like sources together. Okay. One thing we've done, though, is if you look over on the left of our results, and this will happen on every tab, we're actually integrating the multimedia results right here on the results page over on the left-hand sidebar. The image results are coming from UPI, United Press International. This is new content. It actually wasn't available until we turned on the new interface. So. Uh, we weren't getting this in the previous. So United Press International, nice, clear, big images. And I have a caption to give you a breakdown of what you're looking at. The multimedia content we have had access to for a while, are, um, but it, it kind of gets overlooked. So what we've done is now isolated, separated the videos from the podcast here, and just, again, brought them over onto the left-hand sidebar. The videos are coming from the Today Show, NBC uh, Nightly News, uh, PBS, AP videos. Uh, we're working on agreements with other news providers to provide segments from them as well. So if we jump into an entry, let me just grab one of these videos. They don't play too well on your end of the conference, uh, but I'll just kind of show you what happens here. Click on the link for the video. It's going to pop open a new window and uh, run for you. But what I also wanted to point out is that several of these news sources, yeah. we also get a, uh, oh, catching the end of a uh, ad here, it looks like. Move forward a bit. Oh, sorry, folks. I'm going to turn the sound down on that while I'm chatting here. Um, several of these news providers also give us their uh, transcript. So if you can't watch the video, maybe you're on a slower connection or if sound is disabled on your uh, computer, maybe because it's out on the library floor, you've got the broadcast uh, transcript. And then here's our segment from the Today Show. And you do catch the ends of ads sometimes from the way that they send us the videos, uh, as we did with this one. So you get to some video content pretty easily here. 
The uh, jump back out to the rest of uh, results. The podcast tips are coming from uh, a few different sources, but the big provider here is really NPR. Uh, we have links to the audio from their site and then broadcast transcripts going back to 1995. So you've got a link here that will take you out to NPR site and provide the audio. And then here's our broadcast transcript. So we have rights to 10 of their programs there. So we're highlighting the multimedia content, and that really came out of user suggestions. You, you know, you go to CNN, the first thing you see on the screen is a video. So there are so many news sources that we have access to within the databases, and it's, you know, kind of media friendly. Folks are expecting that kind of multimedia experience. So we've brought those results over onto the left. Our hits so for our magazines, if we just kind of scroll over a bit, you've got, you know, of course, um, lots of content here for glaciers. Uh, we're sorting most recent to oldest. I can actually change that. There's a sort by option over on the right, so I could switch that to relevance if I like. Um, so lots of good hits here. But if I wanted to refine this search a bit, there are a few options over here, again, in that left-hand sidebar that will let me do it. I can search within these results. So if I wanted to look for, you know, maybe glacier melt within these results, I could do that. I can use some a couple limit options there, full text or images. Or the one I really like is the limit by. I've got a little arrow here. If I click that open, it's going to open up the Dropbox here and give me the list of subject headings for the articles that we're looking at. So I've got glaciers, global warming, climate change. It's just going to help me isolate down these 1,300 hits I have on the Magazines tab and focus the search. So say if I want to look at excuse me, glaciers from a global warming standpoint, I can click and I'm going to narrow down to 42 hits, something much more manageable and easy to work with. Now you can... Of course, then continue to work with the results. I could remove that limit if I want to go back and explore the rest of the content. Still search within these hits, any of these items. Okay. Now, let's say this is a topic I'm really interested in, or maybe I'm a student. I'm writing a you know paper on this topic, but it's you know maybe it's not due until um, you know the end of the year, end of the semester. Okay. I could come in and do this search, you know, every week, see what's new. Or, if you look in the upper right-hand corner, there are four tools here. One of those is the RSS or search alert icon here. And that may look familiar. This isn't an icon that Gail created. You'll see it out on the web. This little orange box with the white waves in it indicates set up an RSS feed for this page. Or, if I'd rather, I can set up an email alert. Okay, what this is going to do is perform the search just the way I've done it, search for glaciers, limit to full text, limit to global warming. It's going to do that search and email me when there's new content. So I don't have to keep coming in and checking. It's just going to automatically send me emails when there's new content. Now, because I'm logged into my user account, it actually filled in my email address for me already. Uh, but you actually don't have to have a user account to use this feature. You just have a blank box there where you can fill in your email address. Uh, so again, no user account required to use the search alert feature. The alert name is actually going to be the subject line of the email we send you. So I can maybe make it a little more descriptive here. I choose how often I want this topic searched, daily, weekly, or monthly, whatever suits. Click Save. Oh, whoops, I've got a little too much... Uh, text there. can't be more than 30 characters, so change that. There we go. And we get the little confirmation that it's set up. You'll receive an email letting you know it's been set up, and then you'll just restart receiving emails when there's new content. When we send you the email, we give you a link to the new article or the list of new articles, depending on how much new content there is. And when you click on those links, it just takes you right to the database and gives you the content. You actually don't have to put in your library card number or password. Uh, you already authenticated yourself setting up the uh, alert, so we're just letting you right back in to get to the content we're telling you is there. Uh, after my project is over, there's an unsubscribe button at the bottom of every email, so I can turn off this alert if I don't want it anymore. Or, actually, because this is set up and I am logged into my user account, I can maintain it from my user account and turn it off there, too. 
Now there were a couple other options there. Let me click on that uh, icon again. I can make this my own RSS feed on my own RSS aggregator if I use one. Google Reader, Blog Lines, Internet Explorer has one, Firefox has one. Basically, there are these tools that go out and crawl the web for you and bring back information in one place. Well, I could copy and paste this URL that it's giving me into my RSS aggregator, and then I'll start getting the updates there rather than via email. Now, because I'm logged into my user account, I actually have a third option here at the bottom, and that's to add this RSS feed to the home page of my product. So those tabs that are on the front page, the end user can actually change those to something they want as well. So say on the first tab, instead of global warming, I want my glaciers research. I can click Save. When I go back home, now that tab is glaciers instead of global warming. So actually, the patron, the students, can do this for themselves and change these tabs. Okay. So there are three different levels here. Gale Mix can, can adjust them, but then if the library should choose to change and customize, they'd take precedence over the Gale choices. And then as the end user, when I create a user account, I can actually put whatever I want in those tabs as well. So I can customize it for my own use uh, as well as, you know, from a library standpoint. Now, just going to do another search here. Thanksgiving and dessert is something I'm always in charge of at our family Thanksgiving. So I've started researching. I have a quick question. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Um, when you were talking about the end user customizing the glaciers part, mm -hmm. would that only appear when you're logged in as yourself? Correct. Yeah, you'd have to log into your account and then they'll change. Otherwise, it would be Gale or if the library had customized it, you'd see the, the library choices. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Sure. No problem. Now, this search here on Thanksgiving dessert, I've got a lot of good hits here. Say I, you know, want my family to pick what we're gonna what we're gonna have for dessert. Well, I could certainly go in and email them each of these articles and you know do that a couple times. It'd be a pain in the neck. If you look in the upper right hand corner, again, those little tools we've got here, the orange box with the plus sign in it, the white plus sign there, is the sharing tool, which again may be an icon that you recognize. This is something you'll see out on the web. When I click that share tool, what it does is open up and show me the Web 2.0 sharing tools that I can actually link to the databases. Now, I apologize here, my screen resolution is kind of interfering with showing, showing them all at once. Um, delicious accounts, MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, Yahoo Bookmarks, all of these, I can actually link our databases to now. If I go ahead and click on that Facebook option, and what it's going to do is open up a window which will prompt me to post this to my Facebook page. I can put a note here. Um, I could type today. <laughs> now, we are having a little issue with Facebook. The note here says Sa Gale Cengage product failure which, number one, is not true. It actually wouldn't fail. It's not a bad link. Um, but two, of course, is horrible marketing for us. <laughs> it's not a product failure. So we're working on that with Facebook. But if actually if I click on that link, I can put note here. I can change the link, say, recipes or something like that and adjust it. Click Share. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually go to my Facebook page. I apologize in advance for anything embarrassing there. And uh, you can see what that looks like. There we go. Check out these Thanksgiving desserts. There's that link I created. And when I click it, it's going to bring me right back into that search result. Okay. Now, anybody from my Facebook page could click on that. Okay. Let me just pop back to it. If I go to my profile here, I you can see, you know, I've got 139 friends. Any of those folks could actually click on that link and it will bring them into the databases. We are doing what we call open authentication there, meaning that it won't prompt you to log in with your library card number or your password. It's just going to let you in. Okay. There is no 
Um, well, I, I, I guess I just can't say it enough. There is no authentication there. So it's going to draw people from Facebook, from MySpace, from Twitter, and so on, into these resources that the library is providing for them. Okay? Every time somebody clicks on one of those links, actually, let me scroll up to the top here so you can see it. We can see, in this case, you know, Library of Virginia, I'm in their account, but you'd see your library name there. So your library is getting the usage statistics for that. It's the same as if they walked in the door, they just came in virtually. Okay? It's also got all these links that will take you back, return to the library, or actually this, this link here for Library of Virginia, we can actually make that a Dropbox of up to five different links of whatever you want. Back to the electronic resources page at the library, back to um, the Ask a Librarian tool on your website, whatever you may have, we can actually put five different links in that field. So it's drawing people into the databases. Now we are, you know, this is new. It's not something we've done before at Gale, so we're kind of waiting to see what everybody thinks of it, how well it's, you know, received, um, if it get a, gets abused, all those types of things. We're just keeping an eye on it. But it's a way to draw people to the library is our opinion. So that's what we want, people to use their libraries in any way they can. So it's going to draw them in. Okay. You'll see that sharing tool actually in articles as well. So you could use it as part of, again, library advocacy for yourselves. Say, you know, you've got a book club at the library. You're all reading something by Alice Hoffman. Find an interview for Alice Hoffman or a review or essay or critical criticism of the book you're reading reading, the individual articles have the sharing tool as well. So you can open those up and then choose to share this from the library's Facebook page or even just, you know, your own personal page, wherever you'd like to put it. And it'll draw people in. They can read the interview with the author. Maybe before they come in to discuss the book, it can help jumpstart discussion. Okay. Teachers can use it to communicate with kids. I know in a lot of schools, Facebook and MySpace and Twitter are blocked, but a lot of these, like Delicious, um, Dig It, some of these are probably going to be available. Okay? And it's just another way to share information with others. Stacy? Yeah, go ahead. Are you saying that people who get in here is just like a back door, that people who don't pay from another state can basically go into your search results and then go in and do their own searches and use the databases? Correct. It does bring you live into the product. Wow. Yeah, it does. It could bring people in from outside of Virginia. Now, that's the reason we're being cautious with it. This is the only place where that works. Any of the links you have on your website or from anywhere, you go, you know, you go to findatvirginia.com, you're still going to be prompted to put in your library card number or your password. So we're opening up authentication in this little way, and that's something we want to be careful of. Is you know, of course, um, our customers are, are the libraries are paying for these resources. We're keeping an eye on it. If we if there's a huge spike in usage and we can see that it's being abused, you know, then we, you know, that'll lead to a different discussion. But we haven't seen a huge spike, and for most of our customers, it's a flat fee. So it's not how much the databases get used; it's just you provide access. So this shouldn't cost our customers any more money. I guess it's kind of where I'm going with that argument, but um, it could bring folks from outside Virginia in to these resources you provide. But the hope is that then they click on those links, you know, back to library, or then they start to explore their own library and realize what their library can provide. Thanks, that's great. Sure. Yeah, we're finding it's getting a pretty good response. We're excited about it, I know, on the training team. Um, and a lot of us at Gale are, you know, hope to see it expanded. But it's um, just opening the door a little bit, and we'll see, we'll see what happens. Anybody else, any questions? And I actually realize now I haven't uh, checked the chat in a little while. Okay, we're still good. All righty then, let me close out Facebook here and uh, come back. So actually, while I, let me jump back into uh, that article I had. We've added some new features to the articles themselves. Of course, that sharing tool, uh, but also, um, well, actually, citation tools isn't new, but we have added the new MLA uh, edition. So we've got, you can choose either to have MLA for six, the 6th sixth edition or 7th. 7th uh, edition just re, uh, launched this spring. We added this to the database within the last week or so. 
Uh, it's a little, little different for the databases and how they display, but basically I copy and paste that right into my bibliography now. All done. We've also got the bookmark tool, which isn't new, but just a quick reminder here, the bookmark is going to give you the URL for this article. So if I wanted to copy and paste the link itself and put that somewhere, now that still will ask for authentication. Uh, but if you did want to link to the article or, you know, maybe if teachers have online syllabus, things like that, they can take that URL and, and link it right to uh, the article. Download MP3 goes hand in hand here with the player. This is ReadSpeaker, which is a tool that's going to read the article for me. Let me turn up my volume here. Starts reading from the title down, and actually you can. Oh, there we go. Okay. You can also select text and click play, and it'll read just that. So it's handy, actually, for pronunciation. If you know how do you pronounce resolutions, I can just highlight that text and click play. Okay. Great, though, for folks who maybe absorb more when they're listening rather than reading, um, or you know, do both at the same time. Read it as you're listening to it and, and uh, absorb more. That download MP3, though, will let you download that audio for use later. You just agree that it's for educational use. You can download it, you know, if you're on your own computer, download it right to your hard drive or put it on a flash drive or at your one of the library computers. And then say you've got an iPod, just move that audio file into your iTunes and load it onto your iPod and listen to it when you've got the time. Every article is going to have that feature. No matter which tab you're on, you're going to see that read speaker tool. Well, even for the images because it will read the caption for you. So you're going to see that audio tool all over the place. Um, the on-demand language translation, we've added three new languages. Uh, Arabic, Russian, and Polish have been added. We're working on uh, an audio translation as well. So it's not something we have yet, but we want to have uh, an audio translation for the foreign languages as well. So that's coming uh, down, down the road a bit, probably sometime next year. Uh, and it may not be all 11 languages that we offer it for to start. It may just be a few. but. She's, I think it's 10 days. So, so, yeah. so some new features there within in an article. Now before, um, before I go anywhere else, let me actually start a mark list here. As you come across articles that you're interested in, you just mark them, place a little check mark there, or I can, from the list of hits here, I can mark articles. Okay. And that will add them to my mark list, which is growing. If you look over on the right-hand side in the gold toolbar, there's my marked items list. Okay. When I go to my marked items, and this is, again, a tool anybody can use. We've had for a long time. When I get here, I've got all three articles that I've marked. I can then, again, look at those tools in the upper right-hand corner. I can print these all at once, email them, create citations for all of them at once. Just saves you a lot of time. You don't have to put in your email address three different times. You don't have to, you know, print one by one and use extra paper. Okay. <clears throat> and just grab everything up at once. But your mark list in our previous interface was always only good for your session. So if I logged out right now, it wouldn't save it. Okay, I'd have to find these three articles again later. What I can do now is save them to, if we look over on the left, a marked item folder. Okay. Now, I'm seeing this because I'm logged into my account. Okay. I wouldn't have these options if I wasn't. Basically, what you do is check off the articles you want to save and say, I do want all three of these. I'm just going to check them off here. And then copy to, and everybody gets a folder called unsorted category. Okay. That you can throw everything into and save it there, or I like to keep things organized, so I'm going to create a new folder. And well, Thanksgiving ideas, click go. And I get the note. I successfully moved those items to my new folder. If you look over on the left, there's a folder here under marked items now for Thanksgiving ideas. And if I select it, there are those three articles. 
So they've been saved in my account now. Every time I log in, I can go to my dashboard and find them. Okay. So you can keep track of research, articles you're interested in but maybe don't have time to read and want to save them, set them aside later. There's no printing. You don't have to carry them around with you. You just need to be able to get online and into the database and you can bring those articles back. So questions about that at all? Okay. Then just a couple things about the way we've changed your searches. Um, browse subjects is now a search and a browsable feature. This uses our controlled vocabulary. So I could actually search, say here, for global warming. Okay. And what it's going to do is stop and check in with me. Do I want global warming or do I want the Global Warming Solutions Act? If I search on Mars, you know, do I want the planet or do I want the candy company? The same way that probably your OPAC guides you to the appropriate subject heading, that's what we do here. And then say I do want Mars <coughs> planet, I can actually view all the 8,000 articles, or if I click on the little plus sign here, I can narrow these articles by subdivision. So analysis of Mars, history of Mars, things like that. And then once you choose, you end up at a familiar looking result screen. It's going to take you to the same type of place that a basic search does, you just got there a little differently. It's great for students um, who are writing reports, you know, you can isolate and just uh, research the specific you know, questions you may need to answer. Um, just a great way to kind of narrow down your hit. Uh, advanced search, we haven't really changed too much aside from adding a great new limit option. And that is document type. Okay, you always have this fielded Boolean format we call for advanced search. So you put in your topic. Maybe I'm looking for Toni Morrison. Okay. But say I want interviews with her. Well, we've got a limit by document type now in advanced search. I can just, from the list of document types, find interview, select it, and search. And I'll only get back interviews with Toni Morrison. I won't get book reviews. I won't get uh, you know, articles maybe where she's just mentioned. Okay. Interviews with Toni Morrison. And actually, if I look over on my left, there are a couple hits from NPR where we could actually tune into an audio interview and hear that as well. So that's really one of my favorite new features in the new interface is that limit by document type. Um, if you've got students, again, researching or really just a topic you're interested in, one of the document types here is cover story. I like to use that because you know you're going to get a pretty thorough story. It's not going to be one of those short um, you know, 200 word articles. If you limit to cover story, you know you're going to get kind of a meaty article on the topic. You can also limit to critical essay if you're looking for literary criticism. That'll help zero you in. So you can also, of course, isolate to the multimedia pieces as well. If you want video specifically, limit to video files. Okay, now the last thing I want to show you here is just quickly browse subjects. And I have an ulterior motive here. I'm going to search for Time Magazine. This, is, this also has become a browsable feature. We can jump to a particular um, letter here and see the list of publications. Can I ask a question? Oh, sure. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry. I, it was about the, um, the document types. Yeah. Are you able to hit the Control button and select more than one? You are. Yep. OK. If you want to, and then what it does is connect them with an OR operator. Okay. So if I want acknowledgments and abstract, I can just hold down the control key and grab both. We should okay. probably add a little note here that you can do that. Let me make a note of that. So yeah, maybe we'll see that in a future release. Um, now with browse publications, it's always about what sources are making up the database. So you always come here and search for, you know, a magazine, a newspaper, a reference book, whatever it may be. In this case, I'm using time. And again, I've got an ulterior motive here. I want to show you something pretty cool about Time Magazine. Okay. The back file for our periodicals is 1980. So most of, none of our periodicals really go back much further than that. The exception, though, is Time. If I lay my mouse over Time here, it comes up and gives me the little hover over box. We actually have Time Magazine back to 1923, back to its very first issue. Okay. Now, people never see this because of course, Time is a magazine. It's always going to, when you get results from 
uh, the magazines, they always sort, sort and show you the most recent articles first. Okay? So the oldest ones are always going to the bottom of that list. Well, we actually have it back to 1923. And here at the issues list, you know, of course we're showing you the current year. If I open up the drop box, I can go back all the way to 1923 and see the issues from that year. Slowly let it come up. So you can read about history as it happened, real-time reporting, you know, about uh, World War II, the Depression, whatever, you know, you may be interested in. And it's really, you know, a primary document. We can go back here. We've got it's listed in reverse order here. So we've got the December issues. But say we grab maybe this same week in uh, uh, 1923. And here are the articles from that issue. We can see what the president was up. Mr. Coolidge is weak. Now, it isn't a scanned-in version of the magazine. It is just the text from it. Some of the characters are off a bit here, I guess, on uh, the version. But there we go. So really cool content that gets overlooked. So I just wanted to highlight that. Time Magazine back to its very first issue in 1923. So any questions? Then that is a kind of quick refresher with the new interface and uh, you know brief descriptions of what you have there from Find It Virginia. What I'm going to do is just pop back to our meeting manager for a minute. And I wanted to mention our widgets at Gale. Um, again, I'll be sending you the link for this page, so don't worry about writing it down. But you can add search box widgets to your web page, um, actually to your Facebook account or iGoogle page if you like. Uh, these widgets actually, they've got little search boxes in them. You put in a search, it'll launch a new window and do a search in Biography Resource Center or Power Search or Kids Info Bits or whatever you like. Libraries that have put these widgets on their web pages have seen their usage go up 700%. Okay? So it's a really great way to draw your users into these resources that you're providing for them. Um, you can set them up at access.gale.com, and again, I'll be sending you the links. If you have any questions about how to do it, though, again, a call to tech support, or again, feel free to contact me. We can step you through it. I did want to mention, though, that as long as um, the H1N1 virus is considered a national emergency, we're offering free access to the swine flu widget. It will give you free access to a couple databases uh, that provide information. There's going to be reference content coming out of uh, the eBooks and then access to global issues and context. Uh, one of our one of our newer resources. So you actually don't have to subscribe to either of those products to make use of the widget. We're giving open access to both of those products uh, for the widget. So again, I'll send you the link for where to find those. And this last slide is really just about how to get in touch with us, but I'm going to be sending you this too, so don't worry about writing it down. Uh, this is all of our contact info at Gale. If you've got any questions, feel free to send them to me. I'm happy to be kind of your go-between if you're not sure where else to go. Um, I'm a librarian. If I don't know the answer, I know where to go to get it. So I'm happy to uh, answer any questions I can for you. Um, tech support we've mentioned a few times. They can make those customization changes and so on. <coughs> they're there Monday, or no, I'm sorry. They're there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you've got questions on the weekend or in the evenings, somebody at Gale is always there to answer the phone. Okay. Electronic search assistance really does more about how to use the products and what makes them up. So they're more about your everyday, you know, what does keyword search do again? And they can kind of give you a refresher. If you've got kind of a naughty reference question and you can't get, you know, what you want out of the databases, they can help you with a search strategy or point in the right direction. There are a little reference desk at Gale, really. So definitely take advantage of them. They're there Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. So reach out whenever you need it. Um, if you're interested in a training certificate for attending the webinar this morning, just let me know and I can send you an electronic version or if you need a paper copy, I can do that too. So that is really it for our session this morning. Um, any questions, any kind of lingering uh, questions about PowerSearch or your subscriptions? 
Well, then, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, I know some of you had some technical difficulties. I uh, apologize for that. Again, we are running this session again on December 10th, uh, so you can feel free to try and turn and tune into that one. If that doesn't work for you, though, I'm happy to schedule something else uh, at your convenience. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your day and maybe see you on a conference again some other time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Great job. Oh, thanks. Thank you much.